Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> so, I don't know. Oh, too much. Okay, here it is. So, well, actually, you know, let's start from the title. Um, the, the, the aim of this presentation is to present uh, some tools. They are prototype, as I will uh, show, uh, and they are meant to support the environmental management of uh, natural parks. The context where, where they were developed is um, climate change that heavily impacts the faunistic and green population balance of natural parks and reserves, as uh, you might imagine. So in order to um, have some tools to contrast and to identify mitigating actions, uh, park management entities need some monitoring tools to do that. And that's exactly uh, the reason why we uh, try to develop them. Uh, to develop them. Uh, this, this, what I'm going to show you has been developed as part, as one of the results of a project, the European financed project, Highlander, uh, that has recently concluded. And that specific part of, uh, of activity has been done in, uh, in collaboration uh, between uh, Fondazione Edmund Mach and uh, the, the next. So what, what are the tools? You can see here six different um, activities, six different problems that might happen as a consequence of, uh, well, six activities, six situations that, that could, um, could help having a tool uh, that monitors them. So um, monitoring the availability and the, the, of, of mountain pasture, monitoring uh, the different species of, of trees and how much biomass it's in them. Um, monitoring the physiological characteristics of single trees, identifying uh, forests with wind throws and, and estimate the, the damages, um, identify uh, mowing activity on grassland, detecting uh, bark beetle infestation. Uh, the, the, the two, do I have a laser? Yes. Uh, th this means that those two specific um, uh, uh, algorithms, uh, the algorithms behind those two tools were actually uh, described yesterday in a, in a talk uh, from uh, the, the, the people in Fondazione Edwin Mark that uh, developed them. So this talk here is not about the uh, the science and the algorithm behind those six uh, prediction and, and monitoring tasks. It's about uh, describing how we went from the algorithms to a tool and how we uh, thought about um, to make that tools usable for a park manager. So it's about usability of the tool and how to make that deployable in different locations. So to actually uh, make them available for different park managers of different parks. And beware, they are still prototypes. So you will see that they have some flaws. Um, so uh, let's start. Basically, I will describe the architecture behind it and the interface of the six different tools. Uh, so this is the global architecture. Um, there's basically two sources of uh, two different types of data. There's IoT data that's specifically related to uh, the the uh, the case, the the tool that 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 uh, shows the physiological properties of single trees. There's sensors attached to to trees. They the data about the, from those sensors is collected, put in a database, and then um, uh, th that database um, is basically behind a, a service that implements a standard for sensor data, and and that then the data is served to a to a simple uh, web dashboard, especially and en enabled by open layers. Then the second. Uh, big group of, of data comes from satellite or airborne uh, Im imagery that's been elaborated with different tools stored in a file system. 
and then again published through a web server or uh, through a different channel for a subset of activities and then again shown in a in a web dashboard so let's uh, get to the to the tools first one mountain mountain question monitoring with respect to the global architecture that I saw before here we are uh, just looking at the at this branch here of data so the input is sentinel2 l2a products then from that that uh, input vegetation indexes are elaborated via um, via gdal in python then the output is loaded into is well is stored uh, as as jotif in the file system it's loaded into uh, just server and and treated as uh, image mosaics and served as a service as uh, WMS time. Then there's also this other branch here through, through Flask. Uh, we use Flask to, um, to, to, to do some, uh, to show the time series values of, of a single pixel or, a, or, a, or an area through time. Hopefully this will be clear with screenshots. So this is the uh, is a, is a screenshot of the dashboard. You can see there's, uh, oops, sorry. There's an area here where you can actually um, choose what you wanna see. Of course, there's the map area and then there is a time control. You can move uh, backwards or forward. Um, basically you will be pointed to the different days uh, of acquisition of, of Sentinel data, and you can also move through this uh, bar, time bar. Um, there's different indexes, vegetation indexes available, and DVI is shown in like three different ways, depending on if you want to see just the, the values from uh, 0.5 to one, or also the negative values that we have been experimenting. And then there's other indexes, and actually, I think I can show you some of them. Yes, exactly. This is NDVI G. I just I just picked one random day where there was some signal, and and I took a screenshot. Then there is also the uh, um, possibility to show um, the what the amount of change between uh, two different dates. Every uh, um, like the the amount of change in the specific index you have selected here from the date you selected up to uh, with with the values of 15 days in advance you can do this also with the same the, the values uh, of one year before and also and of course you can change the index and this is a difference between the values of this date and the average of the values in the previous years uh, at the same at the same uh, at the same month, so we experimented again different ways of um, uh, of showing the change of the index in time. Oh yeah, uh, this just shows uh, the amount of uh, the number of uh, of images that's available. Uh, for the specific uh, activities that was selected here, so so that so this provides a level of accuracy of the of of what you are reading here. You you know that the, this difference is derived from this number of of images considered in the average. Um, then other less uh, less scientific. Um, uh, parts of this tool, you can, of course, change the background map uh, according to what you think it's more useful for you. Then you can show some, uh, some other kind of uh, ancillary information, like this. Th those are the borders of the pasture areas. Then you can uh, activate an option to compare um, the same area at two, two different times, so to have a like parallel comparison instead of having just one map and, and navigate time. So again, I'm just I, what I'm describing here is that it are the functionalities of this uh, of this tool. So it's not the science behind it. 
And again, you can see here very clearly that this is a prototype. This is ugly, but it provides um, the the time series of values of the average value, the time series of the average values of the pixels in this polygon here. I was able to select that polygon on the map and request a, a time series extraction of the average values. That, that's the, the activity for which we use um, um, raster IO, the one I was mentioning before. Um, yes, so this is it. And, and also for this specific um, tool, uh, there's also, a, a, um, a, again, a time series of the number of, of scenes of, of images that are available um, for each for each day. So this is again a, a way of measuring the reliability of, of what we are seeing. Okay, this was the biggest one of the tools, then uh, we're going to have less screenshots. So three species classification and above ground uh, biomass prediction. The, the um, flow, uh, the data flow is uh, similar, but this time the, the input is uh, airborne, airborne hyperspectral, hyperspectral, sorry, and LiDAR data, and also some, some field data. Uh, then the diameter and the biomass uh, estimation is elaborated uh, th through uh, using a Google, Google Earth engine. Um, and then the outcome is again, stored in a file system and, and published uh, via GeoServer. So this is the um, what you can see in the dashboard. Uh, you basically see from a high zoom level, or actually from a low zoom level, you see the uh, the different species. Then you can of course zoom in, and then you can see again uh, the color codes the three species, and the sh geometrical shape describes the extension of the tree crown as detected by the algorithm. And then, and then you can, at this level of zoom, you can choose to show instead to, to use as a color coding the above ground biomass, again, as estimated. Then you can select at this level of zoom each of these uh, little trees, and you have the, um, the actual numbers of the parameters that were estimated for that specific, in, in this case, for this specific tree crown. Moving on to physiological monitoring of trees. This is the one case where actually data comes from sensors. Um, the uh, the uh, development was, was performed using input from uh, 50 sensors. They are called tree talkers. They are, they are attached to two different types of, of trees in the natural park of Paneveggio in Trentino and they measure vital parameters of the tree together with other environmental and weather parameters. Uh, the data is stored as I described before in, in the uh, sensor server um, that implements the sensor things API standard. And then it's shown through the usual uh, dashboard, usual meaning that they, it, is, it has the, a common uh, appearance, some elements of, of appearance in common uh, with all the others. Uh, this is what you see when you open it. There's the location of the, of the trees. In the, in, this is what the, the dashboard shows when they are clustered. So if you zoom in, that, that point will become three actual sensors. Those are, are, are already single sensors. And if you click on any of them, the system, this is um, old data because this is the test implementation, uh, but what the system would show you in a um, production environment is the last measurement of each of the quantities that are being measured, which are at least double the number you can see now. So it's a it's far, uh, it's it's a very simple way to have a, a to have control of what's being measured uh, currently by the sensors. 
Then moving on to the detections, detection of forest wind throws and damage estimation. Here um, we move back to working with satellite data. The data elaboration is uh, done again by Google Earth Engine and the usual flow goes with the GeoServer and the web page. So this is the uh, appearance of the page. We basically have, um, you see, the location, uh, the, the color codes for the municipality, and each uh, polygon, each uh, element shown in, in the map is, uh, is an occurrence event of, of Winthrow. If you zoom in, you see that they are actually, uh, each of, of, of them are polygons designed in area that were affected by wind throws. And if you click on any one of them, you have this summary of uh, information. The area affected, the count of, of uh, trees affected, and the estimated uh, weight of, of, of mass. Then to grassland mowing detection, mowing, not sure I pronounce it correctly, but when they, when they cut the um, uh, grass. So again, uh, it's the same, basically the same um, architecture as before. Sentinel data products, vegetation indexes elaborated via Google Earth Engine this time because it was not feasible with um, the previous method with, with GDAL. That's a major point uh, that we have to work on. Uh, and then again, GeoServer, WMST, and, 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 um, and the web map. And this channel again is open for uh, time series analysis. The, the, uh, the test area was uh, limited to this portion here. In, again, all the activity was done in and around the natural park of Paneveggio in Trentino. Basically, you, have, you, you see the value of the index. Again, you, you can see it here, but still you can move in time back and forward. You can see it here. You can uh, query for the value at a specific pixel at a specific time. And again, you can query for the time series. And again, you should, sorry, I didn't mention. Uh, yes, no. Okay, this is just what I was saying, what I was hinting uh, that we realized that um, the, the, uh, the, the GDAL libraries and the approach that we used in the first tool was not applicable in this case. We need to basically um, move to an approach that, that completely cloud-based because otherwise it doesn't scale as it is now. Bark, bark beetle detection and forest stress monitoring. The usual flow, again, satellite data, uh, Sentinel-2 data in input, elaboration in Google Earth Engine, publishing with GeoServer and web dashboard. Um, if you have uh, seen yesterday the presentation uh, from Fondazione Edmund Mach, you should recognize the type of information that's available and even the color coding probably. Uh, basically what's, what's available to be, uh, to be shown on the map is the, um, is the, the location that's supposed to be affected by bark beetle, those are estimation, and the, uh, you can filter it by the year or of first um, uh, recognition of that uh, of that area as as possibly uh, hit by bark beetle and by confidence level um, what we, what we are seeing here sorry I, I I was messing up is is the information about the location where bark beetle is estimated to be active um, color coded on the first year of the year, it was first censored in that area. You can, you can show it also, you can color code it on the um, month it was first sensed. And you can uh, color code it on the confidence level. Then 
you could, you could choose to use instead the the filtering on on the same type of classes. And again, if you select uh, an area, you will have the same type of information detailed for that specific area. Okay, that that's the uh, numbers of my company. Not really interesting here, and that is all. So, thank you. Luca, any questions? Any comments? Thank you. Thank you, Luca. Um, just a uh, curiosity how many do you, do you store the data on cloud? locally what no actually that that was part of the problem i was trying to uh hint it uh, all this activity was done on a dedicated virtual machine and it was done only for a specific on a limited time window covering i think it was four or five years so not not much no. I, I actually have a question for the audience if there is no question for me it's a curiosity of mine uh, I'll just go back to, I guess there is no easier way to get to the first slide, but we're almost, oh, sorry, here. I was wondering, has any of you worked or, yes, worked or at least experimented something uh, with this um, standard here about uh, sensors? because it is very useful, but I also realized that it's not very known and popular. So I was hoping some of you knew it, but no. Well, oh, yes. Can I ask you, what are you doing for, or how are you using it? I can put you in contact with the person who is behind it. He's here. Uh, okay, well, I, yeah. I, I know the people oh, cool. who are behind them. I was just wondering if there were other people using it for some application, but thank you. <laughs> well then. Okay. I think well, thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah, thank you so much, Luca.